I'm just using cardboard to make the frames of the glasses. I was kind of like trying to figure out how thick of a frame I wanted, so I know I wanted like somewhere in between these two lines. I'm gonna cut out the circles first and then do the frame. So I put a circle and I put another circle inside. And this is kind of like the diameter that I want uh, for the frame. That is sort of the thickness that I want. So then after, I just take and some electrical tape, which has like a rubbery, plasticky texture. And I just put that around. Um, I know the inside looks kind of crappy, but that's going to get painted. And this is what basically our frame for the glasses is going to look like. So to do the frames of the glasses, you are going to take some cardboard or some other type of material that is kind of stiff and something that you can cut into. I'm taking an X-Acto knife and just going around. Just be careful not to bend it or anything. So once you're done, you will clean up the edges with some scissors and then you're going to do the exact same thing for the inner circle so you can cut out the frame of the glasses. So once you're ready you can just pop it off and just make sure it's all the way cut through so that way it will pop off really easily. Then you take your electrical tape and you cut it up in little square sections because the this is a round form so the squares are just gonna cover the front and then you're just gonna lay them flat and fold them over the edge and this is basically how you are gonna cover the diameter I tried doing it the other way kind of like stretching the tape all around the shape but it doesn't look good the, the it wrinkles and it looks like you put a trash bag on it so this way is better uh, just cutting little squares and sections and folding it over it looks smooth and this tape is great because it has like a rubbery latexy plasticky texture so it looks like actual plastic so once you have it all ready you are just basically going to hammer it down I'm using my hair dryer but you can use a, you can use an actual hammer just to make sure all the tape is pressed down to the max and it's not lifting or anything. And also, you are gonna blow dry it. Um, you can use a heat gun or a blow dryer. I don't have a heat gun, so I'm using a blow dryer. And you just use it on a high setting. So the tape kind of melts into the cardboard and it doesn't lift or anything. And that way you can also make sure that the tape is hugging the cardboard even more so at this stage you are going to lift everything from the back side uh, because this is where you folded the tape over so it looks kind of crappy <clears throat> so once you lift everything you are then you're then going to take some scissors and just cut uh, everything around. So what you're cutting here is the edges that are folded over. The part that you laid down with tape in the front that you covered completely is still going to be there. You're just cutting what mm -hmm. is left over. So ideally, this is what it would look like uh, once everything is cut off on the other side. Then you're going to take your little fingers and you're going to push around the edges and fold them over to make sure it, they don't come off or anything. Now this is the part where you start doing the lenses. I'm using some acetate. Uh, you can find this 
uh, pretty much at any craft store or if you have a binder the dividers are usually made out of acetate so you're gonna draw the size of the lens um, and you want to cut around that I'm doing glue stick here because this acetate is really thin so I'm doing like a double layer here making sure that it's like more stiff and sturdy so once you have your acetate layer that you're happy with you're gonna cut outside the circle that you drew and once you are happy with the size of your lenses you're then gonna take some electrical tape and you're gonna adhere them to the back side we are just doing four square sections per lens so we're doing one on each side here so once you adhere both lenses this is what it should look like four little square sections on each side so there you have it you have the lenses on both now this is going to be the part where we start painting we we are going to paint these as sunglasses, so they're going to be black lenses. So just take a permanent black marker and just go up and down vertically. Just make sure that when you're painting it, whichever way you go is only one way. So it's uniform and it doesn't look patchy or anything. And it looks nice and solid like these are actual lenses. This is the part where we start making our glasses. I have these random round glasses and we are just going to paint the glasses the same way we painted the acetate from the lenses we made. We are just basically going to tint it with permanent marker in up and down motion until the lens is completely black. For most glasses you can for most fake glasses, you can pop off the lenses, just take them out of the frame, paint them, and then you can pop them back in. Now you're gonna start um, doing the touch-ups here. You are gonna take some black acrylic paint and just paint the inside of anything that is showing not black. So any cardboard that you may see through, just paint it all black. You are then going to take the back side of it and you are also going to paint it black with the acrylic paint. Um, <clears throat> the back side is going to be definitely the crappy side, but I'm not too worried because we won't really be able to see it much because it's all black anyway. We have both sides painted. This is what it should look like. You're then going to take some popsicle sticks, you're going to take one and split it in half and you're going to also paint it black. This is the part we were, where we're going to adhere the lenses we made. So you're going to take your pieces of popsicle stick and you're going to hot glue them onto the back of the frames. <clears throat> so just make sure that when you are putting the popsicle sticks they are both at the same angle make sure both lenses that you're adding are going to be at the same height and the same angle so they look symmetrical because you these are diy but you want them to look nice once you're happy with the angle of the popsicle stick then you're going to take some hot glue and you're going to adhere the lens that you made and then you're gonna hot glue onto the other side as well. Make sure it's very, very solid, especially if you're wearing it on Halloween night, you want that thing to stay on no matter what. So I am securing it with hot glue on both sides and also I'm putting some of the electrical tape that we used to make sure everything is stuck like glue. So there you have it. So we are on to making the actual outfit. So this is the pattern that is going to be on the outfit. Basically, I made a stencil and I just used it all over the paper. <clears throat> Honestly, this is the most uh, 
time consuming part of the outfit, but there are two ways of doing this. One is you either, you can print out the pattern, but it's gonna, you're gonna use more paper. And I just did it this way because I didn't have an inkjet printer. So I decided to try it with a marker and see if it was gonna work. And it did work so I drew it all with a permanent marker and this way um, it was better because I thought it added more to the craftsmanship of the outfit like all the faces of the pattern have a different face they all look different um, so it looks very beautiful and it will be a piece of clothing that I can wear afterwards even when it's not Halloween in this way you can also kind of like move the shape of the Mickey Mouse around and get the most out of your paper so for the entire outfit I used four sheets of paper the this paper is a kind of paper that you can find at Michaels you it's like graphic uh, t-shirt print uh, paper and basically you whatever you draw on you cut it out and then you iron it onto the clothing and that is how the print happens and for this I'm using a sharpie or you can use any black permanent marker to make sure the thing stays on no matter what and I'm just um doing a line like this where the hat goes these are the lines for the eyes two dots two lines underneath for the eyes a squiggly line for the nose up and down mouth and that's it that's the face then these triangles here that are left we're just going to cover in black and this you just want to cover it with a thick black marker so basically you're just going to take and this is how you're gonna do it so it turns out even and don't worry if you come out of the line because it's gonna get cut anyway just make sure you just don't cross over into the face and cover whatever dots that you didn't cover in black and there you have it that's your logo make sure you crisp out the line and there it is honestly drawing an entire sheet of this probably takes like five minutes or less but the longest part is really the filling in the black of the Mickey Mouse ears and the cutting out of the shapes that is really the longest part of this so if you print it, this on a printer it will probably take you either half the time or three quarters of the time because the most uh, time consuming part is really the cutting out so basically I printed out a sample and this is what it would look like basically you cut out the shape <clears throat> this paper comes with like some uh, type of paper in the back that you peel off and then you iron it onto the outfit so this is the part where you actually start uh, cutting out the shapes uh, once you have everything printed or drawn. So once you have your little pattern ready, you're gonna set it into place. Make sure you're happy with the pattern and the placement because once it's there, you won't be able to fix it. So basically it will be set in stone, nothing you can do about it, make sure it's perfect. And you are gonna then put some uh, paper, I forget what it's called. It's like the cookie sheet paper that you put on the baking tray so the stuff doesn't stick to it. There's a name for it and I forgot, but you know, it's kind of like tracing paper. But anyway, you're gonna put it in there and you're gonna iron it onto the clothing. So just make sure that when you're doing this and you don't iron it for too long because otherwise it's gonna 
start burning and it will change colors so we are now on to the making of the shoulder pads this look has a very intricate shoulder pad design i'm trying to be as faithful to the costume to the real outfit as possible so we're taking some foam sheets and we're gonna cut out some circles here i'm literally using like a candle as a diameter but you can use anything and basically this is gonna be like the size of a cd pretty much and you are going to make another circle that is going to be of bigger size so i'm using the size of a small plate for this and uh, so you're going to basically have a circle the size of cd and then a bigger circle so now we are going to also print out the pattern onto the foam sheets um make sure that you do a test run because the timing for ironing onto the clothing is different than the foam sheet the foam sheet you can only do it for five seconds or less depending on the strength of your iron because the foam will start to curl and the print paper will start to wrinkle very quickly and burn it's not gonna print out smoothly if you over iron it so just be very careful do a test run to see how many seconds it takes for it to transfer over to the foam sheet so once you print it out then just take scissors and cut it out um, you are I, I basically made it like this but ideally we are going to want to have a double layer so the first layer is going to be the yellow with the printout that i'm cutting out right now but the rest is going to be done with a black sheet underneath for this part you will need black foam sheet and yellow foam sheet and basically you are going to take the black part the print is going to be face down you're going to iron it and then you're going to take it and curl it like a tortilla you're going to hold the shape for like five seconds or so just make sure that the foam is kind of cool and then it will hold the shape like that so you're going to make a bunch of tortillas and then you are going to hot glue the edges so they don't come off and because once you like once you iron it it will start to like open and kind of like um wanting to separate the black and the yellow sheet i attached only with glue stick i didn't put like glue or anything because once you curl it it will allow it to move around but not completely come apart so you will do some with the black uh, on the inside part and you'll do some with the printout on the inside part so you just basically do the opposite when you iron it with the black you will have the yellow on the inside and if you iron the yellow you will have the black on the inside so basically once you make a bunch of tackle shells you will attach them together um, kind of like side by side and that's how i made these shoulder pads i was concerned that it wasn't going to hold um, just because foam sheet is really weird but the bond with hot glue and foam sheet is actually very strong so you don't even need a lot of it and even if it's on a like edge um, angle like this it will hold very well so you don't need a lot of it and it's gonna last all night literally the only way it's gonna come off is if you literally rip it off once it's done this is what it would look like i think it looks super stunning so then we are going to actually attach this onto the shirt 
for me I want to use this shirt later on in life so I am adding some fabric onto the bottom and then I'm gonna stitch it onto the shirt but if you don't care then you can just hot glue it onto the shirt and once you have everything this is what it's gonna look like so these are the glasses I bought this wig from Amazon it was $30 it's from the fever wig collection and for this outfit I bought this yellow leggings from Amazon as well I printed the pattern on them also so this is basically how you make your outfit I borrowed this corset from a friend and this is it this is the gist of the outfit